Um, thank you all. Thank you all for coming. Uh, uh, what I think we have planned for this evening is a um, conversation uh, uh, with Marion, and I'll ask some questions to get started, but uh, I hope um, uh, later on in the evening we can have some questions from uh, some of you in the audience. Um, I think uh, acquiring a book is uh, the price of admission and a delightful price it is. And so you're all, I promise, I had heard about this book from a third party, not Mary, and before I uh, uh, saw it with my own eyes and I was told it was extraordinary. And in fact, it is extraordinary. And to, to a certain degree, it's unprecedented for reasons that uh, we'll get into as we uh, talk, I think. Uh, so if, you, um, if you're just uh, seeing it for the first time tonight, I promise you, you're in for a, a a treat that will last for hours, days, months, maybe years as you go through all that the book has to offer. Uh, but we're here to talk to Marion, so I'd like to um, ask you first, Marion, this is not your first book. You, uh, This is, uh, uh, in effect, a sequel. Can you talk about the sequence of books you did and what the idea of I Wonder, your first book, was compared with this one? Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure I'd say it was a sequel, but, uh, I mean, they're both by me, um, <laughs> So, you know, whatever. But um, I wonder, um, originally I was approached by Thames and Hudson in London to do a monograph uh, in 2000 and whenever, eight or something. And I, and I felt I wasn't ready at that time to do a monograph. But I had an idea for another book, which was I Wonder. And I Wonder is... It, it contains none of my existing work. It's all original work created for it. Um, it's a series of essays and thoughts and on, on various eclectic topics that yet somehow still manage to weave together in a way. So it's very much, um, you know, it's a much smaller book. It's it's more of a a book that you sit down and read, um, and it is a it is an object in and of itself. I mean, it is its own piece of work. Whereas um, Pretty Pictures is. Um, you know, is my monograph. It's it's the compendium of of all the work that I've done in the past ten years, plus all my commentary on that work. Um, it's it's uh, uh, pretty pictures is about design. It's about my role in design, what I think about the work that I've done, how it has evolved. Whereas I wonder is. You don't even really need to know who I am to to read. I wonder. You know, your your grandmother could enjoy it, or maybe your mother or <laughs> somebody. But um, but um, pretty pictures was was you know is definitely for the design market and for people who are interested in um, in me or in a, a career of my of my kind. So it's um, much more focused um, and yet more. Well, no. I'm just going to leave it with more focused. Yeah. yeah. Um, at the beginning, uh, you have a section which you uh, which is history, and you sort of say this is a tale you've told many times at this point. Can you can you sort of like tell that story now? Yeah. Um, I. Uh I started out as a as a book typesetter, and I worked as a book typesetter for ten years, and then I um, and then I got a job, or not, I, I had a job as a book typesetter, and then I started a design company with a friend, and I did that for ten years, and. Um, at you know at the at sort of at the end of that point I you know was completely sick of graphic design I hated graphic design and I decided to leave it. And, and what did you hate about it? I hated um, oh, well I had a very bad relationship with my business partner and we had ended up in you know what I think is sometimes a very classic uh, kind of struggle between accounts versus creative if you want to put it that way and so I, I hated that I hated that constant fighting I hated the the constant compromise um, I felt very um, powerless um, and whatever vision I may have had for things I was unable to I was an, uh, you know I was unable to really I actually just I just really wasn't good enough to to 
you know, to push it through and to and to see that through. And and, and it's interesting is having heard the story, um, uh, you know, in conversation with before and kind of actually t taking it as a uh, as a fable or a lesson that a lot of people could learn from. I had a picture in my mind of this ghastly work that you were doing for money for ten years. And one of the things that's in the book is uh, you know several pages that show that work from your uh, commercial design career with your partner. And I was actually surprised at how it's better than professional. A lot of it is stuff that I would have been quite proud to have done. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's it's fine. I mean, I, I don't, it's it wasn't bad. It wasn't, um, it's just, it was just average. It was not, you know, I, I, it's funny because I remember, you know, there was, there were times that we entered awards with that work and, and we never won and I could never understand why we won. And, you know, it's the same, and, and I just, you know, I know it's the same thing that everybody goes through and you, you see who else won. You think, oh, my thing's better than that, you know, <laughs> the whole thing. And then since I started judging design awards, I see so much work that is that could have been done by me um, 12 years ago. So much of it. And it's good, competent design work. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just not, it's just not exceptional. Yeah. Was, it, was there a moment that, was your decision to make a change gradual or was there an epiphany you had? Um, I think it was semi-gradual. I mean, it was, it was related to my, uh, s you know, disintegrating relationship with my business partner and my increased hatred of her and of the work <laughs> <laughs> and um but I did have I mean I you know I hit 39 or something uh, 39 40 and I and I really did have that moment of um you know thinking if I were on my deathbed and this was my body of work, would I be satisfied? And the answer was no. And so then what did you do? So I, so I quit my, um, I quit my design company. I, I, um, she miraculously, she offered to buy me out and, um, I, you know, I, I leapt for joy behind her back <laughs> and, um, and I started and I started out on my own without a real sense of what it is I wanted to do. I kind of thought I wanted to be an illustrator. The only thing I really knew for sure was that I wanted to be doing something um, more artistic that I enjoyed doing and that people would come to me for that thing, much as an illustrator mm -hmm. works. Um, but I didn't want to be, you know, sort of an illustrator per se, but I, I was really, really, really vague. And it took me, it took me a year or more to really kind of figure out where I was going to go with that. Um, I also earned no money for a year at all. And what were you doing during that year? I was just, I was making things and I was sending them out to the likes of yourself and to, um, you know, I would do the, do the whole thing of, of uh, going, you know, designers that I, going through, you know, the design annuals, seeing designers whose work I liked, seeing who might potentially use the kind of thing that I kind of had in mind, which was, you know, maybe ornamental sort of patterny. Those were the vague kind of thoughts in my mind. And then, you know, finding out who to contact and then sending them things, uh, which I got pretty much zero response from, um, although there have been people since then who remembered receiving things from me, but they didn't do any, except Stephen Doyle. I was contacted by Stephen Doyle and then did not get a book cover based on that. But, um, um, yeah, so I was, I was, you know, I was just, I was just kind of doing stuff, and then some. Oh well, the, the, I mean, the, a big part of it was uh, Speak Up. So Speak Up was, um, uh, for those of you who who are too young to know, was a. Uh, <laughs> In, in internet terms, um, was a, a design blog that um, that I had actually started contributing to while I was still at um, uh, I started you know being a sort of commenter with while I was still with my my company, and was uh, something that I became completely obsessed with and started spending hours and hours and hours on. Um, was eventually invited to be an author along with Mark Kingsley, who's sitting here in the front row, um, and. Um, I didn't, I, I thought I was wasting my time spending, you know, all this time writing for this, writing for this weblog, but it was actually, um, 
at the, you know at the time it was it was the first design weblog, and eventually sort of one of two, and um, was very very well attended by you know some extremely influential important people again who, such who as came to know your name as that of a writer as right. opposed to anything else right and and then so some of those people were also receiving things from me and eventually they put these two things together well and you entered a t-shirt competition and then I answered yeah and not then a I wet entered, t-shirt I, competition right. it was a <laughs> t-shirt design competition yeah I entered a t-shirt design competition for for speak up which you know was was something that initially I really felt was beneath me it, it <laughs> is sort of beneath you but go on <laughs> but uh, you know it was my community and I thought okay well I'll do this was it a, was it a popular vote thing yeah. Yeah. So it yeah. wasn't judged. It was sort of like no, the people, just, people's like choice. People's yeah. choice. And you won. And I won. Yeah. And and um, and that T-shirt led to all sorts of things. Like I, you know, I got a a, um, a job with um, uh, Details Magazine. Was my first paid job. Came directly from that. And uh, Rick Valicenti got in touch with me through that. And and so I started doing like little unpaid projects for little art magazines or little you know little things with Rick or you know whatever and started you know eventually getting more work and, and eventually I survived but it was I mean it was really 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 close that I like almost didn't make it really 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 close and if, if uh, I don't want to <laughs> yeah, for some reason I find the 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 the, tr the potential tragedy and disaster of this much more interesting <laughs> than the success but I'll, I'll you can switch the mode when you guys ask questions uh, it's one more kind of uh, dark question yeah. when you were that close what was plan B get a job in graphic design I actually I actually um, like I had I had enough money to last me a year and I had a plan that if if I did if I hadn't you know started getting work in a year I would I would just go and get a gra graphic design job and that year came and went and I did go for some interviews um, I purposely blew those interviews <laughs> <laughs> where, well, you know, as I was talking to them, it became apparent that they were very interested in designing me and, or uh, in hiring me. And then I was, you know, I remember one of them anyway, I made it, I made it known that I, re what I really wanted to do was, you know, something on my own or so, you know, I made it known right. that I was not going to be, I was not going to be like their a, employee a for a long employee, time. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And um, so, yeah, so I blew those interviews and then, and, and I borrowed money. Oh, and then I started teaching. I got a I got a teaching gig, and that at least paid my mortgage, yeah. and you know, just kind of like just squeaked through. And, and to an outsider, it seemed, and it must have seemed to you as well, that your when success came, it was sort of meteoric. Yeah, it was meteoric. It was weird. I mean, it was like nothing, 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 nothing. A little bit, bang, uh, um, just suddenly lots of praise and lots of attention and next thing you know I was I was speaking at that AIGA conference in Denver and it was the 2,000 people yeah yeah and it was it was it was insane I mean I really uh, I it, w it wasn't something I ever planned or ever thought would happen I, it never entered my head that the I mean, I, ne I never had any intention to become famous doing whatever I just wanted to make a living and and, and do work that you liked so yeah, yeah. that's all I wanted. To, that's all I still want to do. <laughs> <laughs> still, you know, that's that's it. And um, and so that the, all that attention and and this this and it was and it was this story. This story that I'm telling now is what people found so compelling, because it was it was the follow your dream and and it will all work out story. And yet uh, the the truth is that I don't actually believe that's true. I don't. <laughs> I mean, I, I I think that I th you know I was lucky. I was really really lucky, and I was in the right place at the right time. We speak up, and. And um, and I was doing the right kind of work at the right time, and um, you know I, I, I was lucky. Whereas uh, you know I really think that there are you know obviously hundreds of thousands of people who have very very talented people in all area of you know the arts and whatever who who do follow their dream and they don't make it. And I don't know why I made it and other people don't. But, but you also just said yeah, I mean you said something reassuring too, which is that kind of becoming quote unquote famous and everything else, that's sort of extra. If you were just simply making a living, doing work that you love, that would have been enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, and, and that's that's perhaps enough for any of us. Um, it should be. It should be, should be. It, yeah. It's so seldom is, it, is it, it right? Yeah, but it really should be. It should be. Um, uh, back to the book for a second. When you, um, so when you sort of set out to do this book, to do Pretty Pictures, um, 
Did you know from the start that you were going to take the approach that you took to it? And the approach is, I'll characterize it if you haven't had a chance to look at it. It's, and the reason I think it's a unique book is that, as far as I know, it's the most exhaustive, exhaustively documented book about a single designer or, you know, I don't want to say artist because there's like, you know, PhDs who do catalog resumes about artists. But I mean, in terms of just the exhaustive documentation of each project in that book, it's really astonishing. Um, so you will see every sketch. You will see the rejected sketches, every single one. And not just occasionally, like I thought I'd give you a look at my process, but it's there for everything. Well, not everything, but yeah. Nearly. I mean, it sort of yeah. seems to be everything. <laughs> and, and I just know, well, I mean, I know from um, uh, the occasional thing that you and I have done together, which of course, as a, you know, as a as a book recipient, I kind of tried to see if my name was in there anywhere, and <laughs> gratefully <laughs> focused on those parts first, exclusively. But um, but what I saw there was like, you know, there was every single sketch you did for those projects; they were all there, and um, uh, you didn't have to do it that way. The pictures, the pretty pictures, could be bigger if there were fewer of them, for instance. Right. Right. So talk about that decision and uh, what you know, w why you made it. Um. Okay, I, d I did know right from the beginning that I wanted to do it that way. I really wanted to do, I actually really had students in mind when I, when I did the book, um, and I wanted, I wanted it to be something that they would, you know, they would get a lot from, that they would be able to learn from, um, that they would be able to see, you know, the growth of a 10-year career and the process and the, you know, the pitfalls and all that other kind of stuff. Um, but I also wanted it, I wanted it, it's like I wanted it out of my head. Mm -hmm. It's like all the, all the, you know, I, I've, I've spoken at over a hundred, um, you know, events and conferences um, about, you know, about my work and I wanted it gone. I just, I didn't ever want to talk about it again. So I wanted to get everything that I've ever said about all my work out there, done and and complete, so that um, so that it would be, you know, it'd be that that permanent record, my little my little scratch in history, if you if you will. Um, and I wanted um, and I wanted it to be as complete and as honest as possible. Yeah, and and uh, and that's very striking about the book too. It does. It at least it didn't seem to me as I was reading it to have been filtered at all. It's not. It's not. I don't mean by that that it's like babbling or stream of consciousness or just kind of abrupt outbursts or things. But it really is. It seems very guileless and uncalculating in terms of you know what if a potential new client were to read this and sort of see me admit that I that I completely blew this job or right. or that I was fired from this job you know there's there doesn't appear to be any of that sort of second guessing of your own uh, of, of your own experience and um, were there any ca occasions where you sort of wrote something then kind of like deleted and said no I don't want to say that it's too embarrassing um, and if so exactly what were they Can you tell us <laughs> all that? I I, I remember there was there was one there was one that I t there was one line that I took back and I can't remember I can't remember what it was I know it might have had the word fucking in it I, I don't I don't remember exactly what it was but generally generally no I mean I there were kind of stories most of them were stories that I told already on stage some of them weren't um, but again, you know, I really wanted, uh, I didn't want there to be any mystery about, about this work. I didn't, I wanted it, um, I wanted it to be, to be very apparent that, you know, you do some good work, you do some bad work and, and I'm, you know, they, that I've got these strengths and weaknesses and, and, you know, these are my weaknesses and, and and also, I you know yeah I think that I think that there is a sense that a lot of young people have when they're looking at the work of established designers that you know that everything is great that everything they do is fantastic because they see the award-winning work and 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 whatnot and I wanted and I wanted them to know that you know sometimes I fuck up and and I, and you know sometimes the things I do are are, are not good or they're mistakes or and I just I, that's just part of the 
part of the education I think that I was thinking of that, that I wanted people to get from yeah, it. And, and, and as you were going through it, did you sort of like look back at things and uh, sort of surprise yourself? You didn't remember? Um, oh, yeah. You thought that was better than you remembered or this you thought that was awful and now it kind of looks interesting? Yeah, yeah. No, all, all, I mean the full gamut of that. Um, I mean my, my two major things going back and for, forth were um, one was, you know, like what a load of shit. Why do I get a monograph swinging between, you know, this is the most amazing thing <laughs> that I've ever done, but I've never done anything that, that good since, you know. But yeah, there were things, there were all sorts of stuff that I dug up and I thought, wow, I'd forgotten all about this. You know, this is pretty good. How come I've never shown this or talked about it and, you know, that, that kind of thing. So yeah, it was, it was, it was definitely, um, uh, uh, Cathartic, I guess, in a way, yeah. <laughs> and were, were there monographs that you had looked at that sort of impressed you at all? Or the, I mean, no. yeah, I mean, it sort of is, uh, um, th they do, you know, certainly if I were to do a monograph, I would take that other route where I just put in all really great stuff and make it all sound like it was effortless and I never did anything wrong, because that's <laughs> the kind of person I am. Oh, but, come uh, on, Michael. <laughs> but I think, um, but it actually is, I mean, to me, it sort of is, I mean, occasionally you sort of see some sketches that represent process. Occasionally you'll sort of uh, uh, see, an account of, um, of uh, you know, I mean, like, sort of one of my favorite monographs is a, uh, you know, um, The Art of Advertising by George Lois, big oversized book. I've never yeah, seen it. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. a, it's an amazing book, and he just shows all this work, and he shows things that are like, he has a chapter called Stinkers, and it's all things that, are, that went wrong. Mm -hmm. But somehow, on all of them, they went wrong for some incredibly dramatic reason that really isn't because George made a mistake. Oh. It's because, you know, the, the client made a mistake, mm -hmm. something went wrong wrong or the, like you know for some reason no one wanted it or something but right. you always get the same it, it sort of just emphasizes how much nerve he has that he's willing to kind of like go out there and fail so dramatically and the right. and the, those those failures are put forward in a dramatic sort of way your tone through this whole thing is just so measured actually uh it really does have a kind of a, a slight character of an inventory in a way where you're just kind of like lining up all these things yeah. and part of it has to do with i would what must be um what i had known before but i see now in full force is an incredibly methodical working process um, you know saving sketches uh, <laughs> right Am I well sort of I mean I <laughs> Like you have a methodical working, you know, you've got all your sketchbooks and everything, and uh, you keep everything in yeah, order, they and they're numbered and all. That. I think, you know, I do these sketches on various pieces of paper, and then I chuck them in a drawer somewhere. And when I had to, you know, when I had to 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 go through that pile, you know, envelopes full of sketches all <laughs> stuffed into, I wouldn't call it methodical. <laughs> no, but I, I, <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I, I think actually, my, you know, my process is very loose. I don't. Um, um, I don't do research. I don't, uh, you know, I basically come up with an idea in my head and then I try to draw that thing that's in my head. And that's interesting because, so, because, um, so you don't, you don't, you think first, then you draw, you yeah. don't, I mean, I don't do exploratory drawings. Yeah. I don't, I don't think that way. I mean, I, I do, I do tons of work in my head. But the, I mean, to me, it's I mean, even, even after it's on the computer and I'm sitting there and I'm trying to think about colors or different things, I'll sit there, I'll just sit there and stare at the screen. I'm doing all the stuff in my head. I also go downstairs and, you know, sit outside and I'm thinking it, I'm doing it, I'm doing all that stuff. Oh, should it be this color? Should it be that color? Should this be here? Should that be, should I do the type like this? Sure, do it like that. I'm doing it all in my head. But it's, it's uh, that's a that's I mean that's a, that's a, that strikes me as that surprises me partly because um, so much of your subject matter is words and you sort of like if you know if you've been given the word seduction say to work with mm -hmm. you know I mean that's already just by writing it out you sort of learn oh there's a curvy thing and a roundy thing and a curvy thing attached to a stick then a thing that's straight <laughs> in the top and round at the bottom etc 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 all the way down. And uh, I, I mean, if you can picture all that in your head, I mean, I would have to like write it down on paper just to sort of see what I was up against, you know? Well, I, I mean, with something like that, I will write the word down on a piece of paper, and um, and and then you can, you know, there's all the various options: should it be in caps, should it be in upper and lower case, lower case, you know, italic -y or you know, whatever. And then, but after I've sort of done that initial kind of computation and seen what kind of relationships there are between the letters then uh, then I just sit around and think about it and then and, and then so I do all that was work up here and then I go back 
to the paper. And, and, and part of it must be because so much of your work is uh, the kind of things where you have to commit early to something that you're confident about. You know, it's mm. the, the the level of detail in it. It's like you you can't just start you know doing right. a detailed mosaic and just kind of like wing it. You, you know, as you're going along, you yeah. sort of have to know what the overall scheme is when you start in the left hand corner and get to the you know right. upper right hand corner, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's got to be it too. Yeah. Um, you were talking before about uh, the process of getting everything down and out, these stories you've been telling, this work you've done, and you sort of characterize being cathartic. That implies that this is some sort of milestone after which something else happens. <laughs> what is that something else? Oh, God. It's like my next midlife crisis. <laughs> Well, okay. Which I'm in the middle of yeah. <laughs> my career crisis. No, I just um, I, I I do feel that um, you know that that as much as I need to earn a living and and you know still do some of you know the the kind of work that I've been doing before. I I don't know. I want to. Um, I want to. I want to work far more analog than digital. Um, I, I feel that I can't compete digitally with with the young people. So I used to paint. So I want to retreat to painting. I want to treat to to more analog work. And I want to do. I want to make things. I want to. Uh, I want to do more pattern work and less word work. I want to do. Um, uh, um, you know, I want I want to make fabrics and I want to make ceramics and I want to you know do all that kind of stuff. But I don't have any idea how I can. I'm like I'm a, I'm the world's worst entrepreneur, and I don't know how to make those ideas. I mean, I'm I'm really back, except for the fact that I don't hate the stuff that I'm doing now. I'm very much sort of back to where I started 10 years ago in the terms of wanting to do something new, not knowing how I'm going to make a living doing it, and hoping that I can do this new stuff and make a living doing it. I also want to do some stuff with film. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so I'm hoping that that there will be a big change and that I and that that will be a chapter that that gets closed but there's a possibility that through fear and necessity it won't and I'll just kind of dribble on and then die. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hey, uh, 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 any questions in the audience? This is your chance to t turn the tide to something for more positive. I hope so. Anybody? Anyone? Yeah. I'm gonna bring you a microphone, actually. For YouTube. Steve Croder, designers and books, please. So I have uh, two questions. First, you said that you've spoken, I guess, over a hundred times to different groups. So first, I'm just wondering, um, you must enjoy it, or what do you get out of that? Is it a way to give back to students, or just to why what what happens there that you enjoy? And then secondly, it doesn't sound like there are too many monographs that you've seen that you think are terrific. So I'm just wondering, kind of, what, what's your library like? What are the books that are in it that really uh, inspire you? Ooh. Okay. Well, the first the first question, um, what do I get out of speaking? Um, I, th I, you know, I'll be, I'll be completely honest, and it's, it's an ego rush. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's ama it's amazing to, you know, get up in front of a group of people and have them give you their attention and be interested in, you know, in, in what I have to say and what I have to show, and, um. And it's it's uh, you know I wish I could say giving back to the community. I'm afraid I'm not you know not very much like that. I I I'm. <laughs> I'm not you should say next time just say giving back to the community. Yeah, just okay. say that. I gotta I gotta start taking lessons from you, Michael. This is just terrible. Um, <laughs> how how do I recover from this? Yeah, no. Um. <laughs> so the answer to the second question. Oh, okay. So the second question, um, the book. You know, I, I I didn't I didn't specifically do any any research on monographs. Um, I've seen a few uh, that I like, um, that, you know, or that you know. I mean, years ago I got uh, Stefan's first Stefan Sagmeister's first uh, first monograph, which is one I like, and Paula's as well. Um, but the books I have in my the books I have in my uh, in my in my library, you know, run the gamut from design to you know art, photography, and then just um, 
you know, weird things. Uh, uh, you know, like uh, stuff. Ricky Jay and, and his and his uh, um, the, the you know the magician uh, Ricky Jay does has a, has a really great collection of um, ephemera and um, and things from uh, sideshows and circuses for the you know the 18th century kind of stuff um, and. I don't know, just you know, strange, strange things that 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 catch my fancy, um, that fall under a very broad rubric, I suppose, of, of art books, and those are the those are the books that I get, you know, what what you might call inspiration from is is, um, yeah, artists and painting and the things that are things that are other than what I am. I I, I don't. Um, I don't buy that many design books. I get sent um, quite a few of them by friends, and by um, when I'm, you know, when I'm involved in a compendium or something, I'll be sent a, a copy of that book, and then I, uh, you know, and then I'll, I'll look through it. But um, but I also have a, you know, a pile of unread books that you know that's that's like about that high, um, and I'm afraid that you know a lot of the design books are in there. So, and it's not that I'm you know not arrogantly curious i think it's just it's just a matter of time and and I also i think when it comes to design I, I i have a i have always had a um a kind of a fear of polluting myself mm. with other people's ideas it's really important for me to have my own ideas and i have this fear that if i if i'm looking at other people's design work that i will either consciously or unconsciously pick up pick up things that will then come out of my work and I, and I don't want to do that I want I want it to come from somewhere else um, you said when you mentioned Ricky Jay it reminded me of a question that I was thinking of when I was looking at the book which is that it sort of is some when I've seen your work it really sometimes has a magical quality to it you know how I mean how did she do that it just seems so you know incomprehensibly you know beautiful or intricate or something and in a way in this book you sort of more or less describe how all the tricks are done yeah yeah um are, is that something that interests you like how the tricks are done do you just like to be astonished no. by magic or do you like do you is it important to you to know what's really happening it's not important to me and this is the funny thing is that so many people are interested in process like the you know one of the main questions i get particularly from students is what is your process and not only do is it, i think my process is boring and i think i i just i have no interest in other people's process and i would never ask the question i just it doesn't i'm i'm very interested in the final products and 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 i'm interested in you know what it speaks to me what i get out of it and 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 also i might think about you know like what was michael thinking when he did that but i wouldn't i would never ask you what your inspiration was or how you did it or i mean i suppose if it was a, te a particular technique that i wanted like i you know like with christoph neiman i i don't know how he does his I, I, anytime i try and do a line drawing and then i scan it, it looks like shit i don't know how he does that so <laughs> So you know, there might be something about about that, but beyond that, I I'm I'm not interested in in process. Yeah. yeah no, it sort of remind my um uh, one of my uh, I have two brothers, and this is a complete apropos of nothing, but it's sort of it's, exa <laughs> it's exactly why people ask that question in reverse. Except um, this is a non sequitur. One of my brothers uh, came down with a fantastically obscure and horrible disease called necrotizing fasciitis. Uh, that's also known as the flesh eating disease. Yikes! And um, he um, this happened. Uh, a dozen years ago, he had to have a leg amputated. The whole thing was incredibly dramatic. He is with us, to, not here in the room, but he's uh, li living a happy life in Ohio. He has provided all three of my kids the subject of their college entrance examinations. There's something so thrilling about this dramatic story. Then they say, my biggest inspiration is my Uncle Ron. God bless him. So, um, uh, but but every time I tell people this story, they say, oh, how, how did he get that? And, th and what they really mean is, how can I not get yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And, uh, and I think, <laughs> I think, so I think when people ask about process, one of the things they're trying to figure out is, um, you know, how, how can, can I do that? Exactly. How can I do that? You know, yeah. and it's just like if you know a good photographer, ask them. If you, any great photographer, say, what's your what question you get asked the most? And it's always something like, what kind of camera do you use? What kind of film do you use? Right. People think, well, I will go get that film now. You right, know, right, and 
I, and then my pictures will look like yours, uh, yeah. you know, Sebastian Salgado or whoever they're asking the question to. And they sort of, you know, there's all those things are actually sort of irrelevant. And in fact, yeah. my, you know, they, the answer to my brother's question is like, I remember the, I remember asking the doctor that in the, um, the you know, the, uh, the, the night of the hospital, and he said, oh, the, the, no one knows, and it sort of doesn't matter, does it? Yeah. <laughs> At this point, and yeah. I'm like, yeah, you're right, you know. So. Yeah. Uh, he, he, but I'm sorry to, no, that's really, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great story. <laughs> thanks, thanks for already going downhill and amputation <laughs> rears its ugly leg or whatever. Death. Okay. Amputation. Uh, other questions from the audience that are not. Yeah, please. There. God, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, it surprised me to hear when you said that research never enters your practice, really. And um, I'm curious, I'm going to slightly go back to asking about inspiration because you're. Um, your formal vocabulary seems very specific, and I'm curious where that initially came from for you, um, like how you developed it in the first place. What do you mean by my formal vocabulary? Like just the, with drawing in with such intricacy, and I mean, to me, I just picture you kind of like poring over like Owen Jones's grammar of ornament, ornament, excuse me, um, like looking at like like Middle Eastern uh, ornament and things like that. Like it just seems like there's very specific sources where this initially came from, and if you don't kind of actively do research, I'm curious where that kind of came from the beginning. Okay. Um, it was kind of a mystery to me where it came from, um, but there's a piece in the book um, that was that was a piece I did for um, uh, Milton Glaser's, a, a class with Milton Glaser, and it was um, a map of influences. And when I did that map of influences, I started by, um, you know, thinking about all the, the, you know, the formal influences and the, you know, also the materials we use and all that other kind of stuff and typography and all those kinds of things. And I was, as I was kind of tracing through my life, all the things that I could think of, I remembered, oh yeah, all through my 20s I traveled. And and so I started going through, you know, I thought I'll throw in some travel photos. And I started going through these travel photos and lo and behold, like there's all the stuff I was interested in. There's all these photos of tile work and, you know, palaces. Like, I, you know, I went to India, I went to Africa, I went to, you know, all through Europe. And all of these, all of these things that I had seen were... Uh, were the, you know were were, were they, it seemed like oh my god I think this might be the seeds of my of my interests because that's it, you know it was all there and that was the that was the only time I could say you know I think that's where this came from you know which isn't to say that I that I don't have books of Islamic art and and you know that I do I do look at them I love you know the Persian paintings and and all that kind of stuff but I've not done that deliberately like now I must study this or um, or even I want to do something that is that is like this so now I have to go look at it to you know in fact I will do I'll, you know I'll, I'll sort of do the opposite I'll, I'll you know I'll try and again try and prevent myself from recreating something so they're definitely influences but I wouldn't I would never call it research it was more of like a retroactive discovery. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, but it, it does raise the question when you said the last thing about uh, uh, deliberately trying to avoid repeating yourself. Um, you know, the, the market forces actually uh, tend not to reward that. You exactly, know. Exactly. I know. That's what I've discovered. Yeah. The, I mean, <laughs> if, they, if there's something you're good at doing, uh, getting really good at it, and in fact, you know, you read any. Uh, I mean, if if McKinsey were to consult with you, they say what you have to do is sort of like develop a capacity to kind of generate this stuff that people want faster and faster at lower and lower cost to yourself and right. sell it for more and more. Right. And um, that's ex that you're sort of doing it exactly wrong. I'm doing it totally yeah, wrong. Yeah, exactly. And, 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 and is it difficult to fight that force? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's become a really difficult thing. I mean, when I started out, it was it was very interesting because I, there was very few people doing, you know, that kind of ornamental work. So I was really unique. And also because people hadn't seen it before, um, they had this sense of awe and they didn't fuck with me. It was like, oh my god, you've made this amazing thing. I have no idea how you did that. That's great. And I had that for a couple years. And then more and more people started doing it. And then and then I started getting this pushback. Like, oh, could it be more like this? Or it could it be more like that? And, and then I started to become bored with, um, you know, the, the, you know, the kind of swirly stuff and all that, that sort of thing and interested in, in other things. And, um, so I started to move 
uh, in another direction and you know for the past five years that's what I've been doing and trying to drag clients you know it's like they're dragging them kicking and screaming and sometimes they don't come with me sometimes they bail or sometimes I bail and it is it's really really hard and it's become it's become you know it's become the reason that I am uh, not as uh, certainly not as financially successful as I could be and um, you know and not and not hired nearly as much as I as I would be if I you know if I was a if I was more predictable and a little bit more Reliable, reliably reliable deliver, and delivering a Mary and Banji's yeah, yeah. thing that people could anticipate in advance, and then I mean, people come to me and they say, "I love your style," and I go, "Well, which one? Like, yeah. what do you what do you mean?" <laughs> yeah. You know, I think I think that you could say certainly ornaments density and complexity is is, is the closest thing you can get, but what form that's going to take is is going to be very is going to be very difficult. Uh, another question. Yes, please. We are running a little low on time, so this is going to be the last one for the okay. evening. Um, I, w I was just going to ask you, um, you talked about the fear that you had um, 10 years ago or whatever, um, going going out on your own and just saying you want to, you just want to go all out and do whatever it is that, that you have in your head to create, however that happens. Um, and then you talked about how that's pretty much where you are right now. I wonder if the fear is any less um, because you know that you got through it the first time or if it's a different kind of fear now. Uh, I'd, I'd say it's the same kind of fear, but it's more. And the reason it's more is because when I did it the last time, I kind of had nothing else to lose. I hated the work I was doing. I had to change. I really felt like I was going to kill myself if I didn't change. Whereas now, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the work. I, you know, still doing the kind of work I've been doing. I still, I still enjoy doing it. I want to do different things. I want to make a change, but I'm not. I'm not desperate, and I'm not. I'm nowhere near the point of you know, like wanting to stab myself in the eye with a pair of scissors, kind of thing. So I, so so it's 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 really um, I like I'm leaving something. M if I leave it or if I move away from it, I'm moving away from something that's much more viable than what I had before, and is also in a sense, you know, I hate to say this, but in a sense, it's kind of like. Um, it's kind of like a brand, and I really, I really hate to use that term about myself, but there is, a, there is an equity in myself as that thing, and I'm very afraid to leave that. I, you know, I sort of, on the one hand, I want to do new things. I, I want to expand. I'm, you know, I'm bored. I'm quite bored, and I want, you know, want to do these other things. But I'm also very afraid that I'm going to get five years down the road and say, "Fuck, did I screw that up?" Because now I'm nobody, and nobody remembers who I am. And five years ago, I could have, you know, I could have, you know, kept going. So that, I'm, I'm, it's, it's, yeah, it's the same fear, but much greater. Yeah. So, um, despite all the talk of fear, disease, etc., <laughs> it's very macabre here in the rare book room at the Strand. But the book itself is endlessly absorbing, joyful, and ins and inspiring. And uh, uh, I want to thank uh, Marion for making it come into existence, and thank you for this evening. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for on behalf of the Strand. Thank you very much, Marion and Michael, for joining us. We do have